So I was just doing some sort of um, file transfers, getting moving some of my old files over to my external hard drive because it just builds up so quick. So just to keep them externally and all that good stuff. And I got thinking, when was my first mention of Harry Owen? So I was going back right back to the beginning of the journeyman to try and find it when he was mentioned. When we first talked about the team and stuff, he wasn't really mentioned, like just briefly, but we never even talked about him. The first mention is when he was playing in his first debut game, first game of the season for Cardiff Met Uni. I think we should, you know, have a little reminisce and go look at it. Shall we? Yeah, OK. OK, we've lasted seven minutes. You know, it's not too bad. Our Farah's done well there. We need to keep an eye on the players a little bit more um, just to see who's performing well. That's a lovely ball out. Can Owen use his pace? Go on, Owen. Dinks it back. Oh, tricky one for the goalkeeper. Surely, Owen, hit one. Yeah! Seven minutes gone. We've pounced on a mistake. It was, it was going to happen, wasn't it? Mistakes are going to what we're going to live off this season. We're going to nibble on those little mistakes. That's a horror. I don't blame the goalkeeper there. That is a horrific back pass. And Harry Owen gets his first of the season off the mark. Whatever happens now, I'm happy. Wait, oh shit. I didn't realise the time was going so quick. It's 83 minutes. Could we get a win? A cup win? <gasps> Owen! It's two! I'm a, I am, I'm a god amongst men. I'm claiming this all for myself. It's not the players. It, this is all me. And that is how the story of Harry Owen began with that wonderful performance. He's never quite reached those goal-scoring heights again. But, you know, we all know he's a massive part of this team. He runs the show behind the scenes. He looks after all the players. You know, he washes the kit, probably. He's got, he owns the burger van and the building site construction firm. He's just a man for all seasons, apart from in a couple of seasons when he retires. Right, let's get into the episode. There's a couple of jobs that might be coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings and salutations, my friends. Welcome to episode 35 of The Journeyman. Right, we've got a bunch of games to catch you up on. We're also playing, if you look at the top, Arsenal today in the Champions League group stage. And also there's a couple of jobs. They're not available yet, but they are looking dodgy. And they're both in the French League O. Right, because that's how you have to say it. League O. Right. <laughs> Like coughing up a hairball. Okay, so let's catch you up on what's happened first. So we played a bunch of games. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Uh, here we go. So Milan, <clears throat> we won on penalties in the Tin Pot Cup final. And then we started the league with Atalanta 2-1. Blanco and Lumber getting the goals. We then played Pescara. Avi Moore getting the goal. He's our Van Doom replacement. And Blanco, who's been on fire this season. Ascoli, we beat 3-0. Blanco, Connor up and Lumberg. Um, we then played Braga, Braga, is it Braga, Bra Braga, Braggy, Brugo, um, we drew one all, <clears throat> they scored an equaliser in the 93rd minute, but Avi Moore scored another goal, we then drew with Sassoulo, two all, um, Avi Moore and Lumber getting the goals, we then smashed Udinese, 3-0, Belletti with his first of the season, De Pascals and Avi Moore with the goals, and then Chievo, it's definitely Kiever now, isn't it? It, it? it is forevermore now. That's in my head. Um, we smashed them. 5-1. Blanco with a brace. Avi Moore. Jean-Claude Van Damme honours a sub. And ain't no party like a Thomas party. He's still kicking around. What an absolute legend. We need to see if we can talk to him about um, becoming a um, coachy person. Where is it? Um, what? Where do I do it? Advice? No. Is it here normally? Is it there normally? I can't remember where the fucking... Tell me in the comments if it's supposed to be there. I can't remember. Um, I think it's supposed to be interaction, isn't it? It's supposed to have a chat with him. But I think we'll try and get him to become a staff member. I, I don't know if he's going to retire at the end of the season. He's still a very good player. Um, but today, as you can see, we're playing Arsenal in the Champions League group. We've got Leverkusen, Arsenal and Braga. Bra Braga. Braga. <laughs> I'm such a... Plonker. Right. 
Oh, and then we're playing, look at that, we're playing uh, old Joe Hart's Torino. I don't think he's he's manager there anymore. Right, so let's get into the game. We're just going to play one game today, because like I said, we're going to whiz through this season, get stuff done, play lots of games. It's only when we get, we get all the jobs coming in, and like this is a bit too early in the season for jobs to start appearing. So we're zipping through. So we're going to go PS Vita in gold. The Pascals are playing at right back. He's playing 8.22 at the moment in his uh, two starts, two sub appearances. Ivan Silva probably needs a rest. Is it even game day? It is game day. OK, not ideal for the Arsenal game. Um, Mancini, where are you, sir? Mancini. Mancini, come. There we go. Um, Kekabagirli, Emmanuel. We're, I know. We're just Emmanuel, we're just going to call you Emma. I'm sorry, but it's the first thing that came into my head. Connor up. Uh, ain't no party like Thomas party. Uh, oh, shit. Transfers. Shit. Transfers. I'm like, you haven't heard of this guy before, have you? Like, I'm smooth. You think after over a year of doing this, I'd learn, like, the routine of, of stuff like this. Okay. So, as you saw in the last uh, episode, we were trying to get rid of a couple of centre-backs because we bought two new guys in. And uh, Corinthian Muller... Corentin Muller went for £3 million. Okna, who's a, a really good player, but he, now we're upgrading. He's starting to struggle a little bit. We loaned him out to Crystal Palace. They're paying all his wages and two hundred and fifty grand a month, which is perfect, because then the new manager can decide if they want to keep him. Then we got Rida Boobly Doobly, um, went to Empoli for 1.1, just a sort of failed youth player, and everybody's going to make the grade. And and the the pink wonder that is Julio Varela, everybody's new favourite player, has gone on loan to FC Loriente in Serie Oh, Right. Uh, <laughs> and then, so we spent some money. So let's have a look. Uh, you saw that one. These are the two you haven't seen. So a loanee and a purchase. A £10 million purchase nonetheless. Big bucks. From Arsenal. So he's got to play today. It's Michael Wagner. Wagner. However you... Waggy. Right. Waggy. That's his name now. Right, Waggy. <clears throat> I've had my eye on this guy for a long, long time. He's been on my shortlist for quite a number of years, since he was about 20, I think. He's a Czech Republic international, 41 caps, bags of experience. Um, and he's just a hell of a passer of the ball, basically. Look, technique, 17, passing, 18, first touch, 17. Um, he's got really good decision making, decent all rounder, everything else. Not too bad at all. A, a perfect deep line playmaker. We bought him for 10. He's valued at 18 million because he was transfer listed. He's playing close to his full potential, but still a very, very good player. He's just settling into the squad nicely. And we've got Diego Collette, um, who we bought in as our advanced playmaker. <laughs> look at the, look at the tash. Look at that. Uh, that is marvelous. That is wonderful. That is an, a beautiful, beautiful thing to see, that moustache. That is amazing. Uh, for a 19-year-old, that's impressive work. Right. Um, and we got him on loan because I thought, actually, uh, the pink-haired wonder, Julio Vera, um, I thought we can send him out on loan to get some game time. We can bring somebody in because he's not going to get a massive amount of game time. So, as you can see, Avi Moore... So we sold our advanced playmaker for £60 million. We replaced him for somebody for £3.5 million, And he is smacking them in. Five goals, three assists in all comps so far in eight games. Pretty damn impressive. Blanco's on scoring form at the moment as well. Lundberg's just doing what he did last season and carrying on. Party got a goal. Let's just stop fucking talking and go and play Arsenal, shall we? Oh, this this will be fun. Um, who is... Um, Pep Guardiola is manager of Arsenal. There we go. Didn't think that was going to be the case, did you? I thought Wenger would be still be hanging on, like 90-year-old Wenger. <gasps> four, four, two. We're going to win something, I promise. No, no, Wenger has gone. He's probably dead in this game, to be fair. Right, this is going to be a, a tester. Arsenal won their first game 4-0 four, four against Leverkusen. Oh, no, look who their key man is. It's the actual Steve Brown. Boo. Oh, it wasn't his fault. I can't really boo him. He didn't have much. Oh, look how good he is, man. We had him. We owned him. <laughs> oh, look. He's played every game for a like, Yeah. Okay. Steve Brown is going to haunt me. Right. So right, we got Waggy. He's going to go and haunt them. Um, both teams come in his good form. Good. Yeah. Uh, he's just been rested. Uh, Mancini. I've got complete faith in him. Okay. Oh, no, not Steve Brown. Pick up where you left off, boys. Lovely, lovely. 
Yeah, so like I was saying, there's not there's not a massive amount of clubs this early on that sack their manager. There's like f- some Swedish clubs, I think, because the Sweden league takes part at a different time of the year. But there's nobody remotely big yet. But there is a few starting to struggle, which I'll show you after this game, that we'll have a little chat about and see what they, they're doing. A few of you suggested that I should resign and look for a job. And I just, I don't see the point in that because there was no jobs to apply for. It's not like I was, if I was applying for jobs and there were, all the p- clubs were going, oh, sorry, we can't afford your compensation or something. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <sighs> they can't afford your compensation or something, then fair enough. But there wasn't any jobs. So me not having a job is not going to, the AI doesn't work like this. The AI doesn't go, Plodding along their AI chairman going, oh shit, Loki Doki's out of work. Let's sack our manager so we can get him. That's not how it works. They just, if their manager's doing shit, they will sack him. So I, I really don't see the point of just not having a job. Um, because we can still do stuff here. And, you know, work on our reputation, work on our scouting, get more. I'm, I'm building up a massive sort of shortlist of players that I want to potentially buy for the new club. And I can continue doing that work. So... Yeah, and I'm still enjoying playing as Lazio manager, so I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't get that suggestion at all. And we've only got, we've got less than a year left on our contract now. I purposely didn't renew it because then I'd have a, a much smaller compensation fee. Connor up with a great tackle, more dinks one around the corner, Belletti chest sit down, lovely through ball. Blanco, he's been on fire this season. Today is not that day. Brown with a fucking good save, like he's a good goalkeeper or something. night also want to say a massive thank you to two brand new patrons and that is unknown manager and um mark moorhead thank you very much guys for becoming patrons you're absolute fucking legend my my patreon patreon is weird because like you guys have been so generous and i watched sort of patreon slowly climb during the month and then i'm thinking oh my god we might get to like 500 dollars, like the first sort of goal and then, because at the end of the month, some people stop paying or the fi- the payment gets rejected, it then it then drops down to like four hundred and twenty, four twenty. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a, such a child. My, and and then it sort of gradually builds up again. So so thank you, thank you very much for everyone. I've decided I'll let you into a little secret because I know it's the big sort of hardcore fans that are at this you know are still with me thirty five ep- or seventy odd episodes into a journeyman. Is that what I'm going to do? For everybody that's been a $5 or more donator, when they get to six months of being a Patreon, a patron, fucking cock, like Tourette's, <clears throat> Thundercats, um, <laughs> that I will send them a little exclusive gift. It'll only be a tiny little thing. I'll contact them on Patreon for their address and stuff. And just, you know, it might be a, a Loki Doki pen or a mouse mat or something just exclusive that nobody ever else will ever get sort of thing i thought because i was uh, let's say disappointment yeah disappointment because when somebody becomes a, a patron you know i always give them a thank you what regardless of what level it is and then if they do five dollars you know they go in the credits and that's all nice but when somebody's been doing it for a few months I don't feel, you know, I don't want to have to make a video that where I have to thank everyone again and stuff. People who just get really annoyed of that. Say, thank you for your continued support and list 80 people every month. So what I thought was I'd, a little six month treat. When we get to that stage, um, I'll, I'll start doing, I'll find a little exclusive Loki Doki gift that I can, that I can send to you guys just as a little extra thank you for support. That's a fucking awful corner, isn't it? Um, just as a thank you for that sort of continued support, because that, that's, that's huge, you know. Tackle him. Tackle him as well. Oh, Emma, you beautiful person. I've totally forgotten who Emma is. That's our centre-back, isn't it? Is it? Yes, it's our centre-back. Fucking hell. I, was, well, I got that. I've totally forgotten who that person was then. The Pascals running around in a little random circle. Trying to find a way out. Party. Plays it inside to Moore. Moore's looks really, really good since we brought him in. Belletti. The Pascals. The Pascals drives forward, floats onto the into the oh, penalty, penalty. Juan Diego Puno Puella <laughs> gives it away the penalty. That's a, that's, oh god, penalties! Oh, I did buy a penalty taker. 
Um, but he's not playing, and he missed his penalty anyway. Probably Lundberg? No, number two. Who's number... Oh, De Pascal's. De Pascal's. Go on, son. Motherfucking turd! That's what that is. Can't score a fucking penalty, can we? Right, Jean-Claude. Um, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. Dominic Mayer can come on. He's our sort of new right back, but he's a natural central midfielder. Let's go attacking. Um, it's a pretty, pretty even game. I'm quite happy to go. The fact we, might, we might lose this, but to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Arsenal, I'm pretty damn pleased with that. John Claude with a lovely flick on Moore. Ah, it's got nicked away from him. They scram Arsenal scramble it away. That went off, ref. That went off. That went off. Hello. Hello, Lano. Hello. No. All right. If you're wondering what that reference was. If you're wondering what that reference was, the <laughs> Thundercats. There was... There's a program on English TV called The Undateables, and it is singularly the best program in the world because it's people with disabilities and learning difficulties and, and like um all sorts of tricky to deal with situations socially awkward people and when you when i first saw it i thought oh this is just a program for taking the piss out of disabled people but actually it's one of the sweetest programs you and it but it's funny but you it's really amazingly sweet at first, I thought it was like exploitation of these disabled people or people with difficulties and stuff. And But it's it's really not because you see these people with various different sort of problems that would struggle to get any sort of date and stuff like that. Meeting like-minded people. So you might get a couple of people with Down syndrome. And their relationship is so sweet. It's so amazingly sweet. But you also get some really like... Like, Tourette's is one of my favourite issues in the world. <laughs> it wouldn't be if I had it. But there's this one girl, I think it was last season, and instead of most people are like, fuck, fuck, wankers, wankers, as their Tourette's thing, she would say Thundercats, which was one of my favourite childhood TV cartoons, and just go, Thundercats, it was just amazing. Right, let, should we talk about, yeah, lost that one. Okay, let's just gloss over it, shall we? Never happened. Blah, 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 blah. Didn't stop. Oh yeah, they strike lucky. Yeah, we'll take. They, they can strike lucky. Their goalkeeper's quite good, apparently. Right, let's let's have a look at the jobs before we finish the episode today. Like I said, we're just going to do one game episode, so I can do a big catch up and we can talk about jobs that are coming up. Oh my god, Paris Saint Germain beat Bayern two 0 uh, We we know how good they are at holding on to a lead. <laughs> Topical. That was a group stage. Fuck off then. Um. Finances are looking good still. We've got, still got 28 million to spend, um, but we'll probably leave that for the next manager. So, here's the actual jobs. Quite quite, quite slim pickings at the moment. Um, but, job security is the big one. We've got Montpellier in the Ligue 1, Ligue 1 and Lyon in the same division. Um, Lyon would be quite nice, wouldn't it? But they are four and a half star rating. I don't think I will get that job. Um, we've got an Austrian team. I really don't want to go to Austria. No offense, Austrian. My and insecure finances. I don't want to go to a place where I have to make. That's one of my caveats. I'd 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 happily go to a smaller club if it's rich. I don't want to have to do what we did with Lazio and be like money saving experts over here. Um, if we look at league, oh Montpellier have played nine, drawn one, lost eight. Um, so that might be a little bit tricky. Leon are struggling down in 14th. Like, Leon is obviously the one I've, I've got my eye on. But Montpellier would... <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> I, like this. I like the kit. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. The good thing is, when you've got a job like this, another reason for why you should keep your job when looking for a job is that, for instance... Montpellier are coming up possibly as a job that will be available. Um, not only can I just look at the key player and stuff like that, I can go into their players and scout them all. So I know exactly how good their team is. I already know if I'm going to get the job, what players I need to replace and all that good stuff without having to look through manually and stuff just to get a better idea with my scout reports. So bonus, like this guy, he's already on my shortlist. Two players they've owned are already on my shortlist. Um, decent, a couple of decent youngsters. Right, there we go. 
Let me know what you think. You know, not many jobs. I think next episode there'll be lots more to talk about on the job hunt front. <laughs> Thundercats. Um, I might introduce that as my new little thing. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys. Let me know if you're watching the Undateables because it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you bright and early in the next one. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye.